ناد فطنا طلق الدنيا وخاف الفتنا نظروا فيها فلما علموا أنها ليست لحي وطنا جعلوها لجة <تصفيق> Actually, it was a few years ago, I was in the market, and uh, in my case, my wife, and this lady came to us just to kind of let the cute kids you have, kind of coochie coochie coo, another boy, and she asked, what are their names? So I said, this one's Mary, this one's Jesus. And she's like, what? I didn't hear about it. You say Mary and Jesus? I said, yes. This one's Mary? So she says, wow, my wife is in the car next to me. So then you can put the two together. I said, this lady with a car, honestly, a postman, went back, could be whatever, and two kids, Jesus and Mary. She was confused. So I told her, actually, for Muslims and Islam, we need to submit to the will of the Almighty God. And Jesus is a prophet of God. And we love him. Actually, we love him so I love so much, and I'm sure every Muslim does, that I named my, you know, my child, my son after And Mary, his mother, that I named my daughter after. The lady was just amazed. How come Muslims believe in Jesus and Mary? How come? Now you see, brothers and sisters, this is the main, there's such a misconception in the world. It's hard for us to understand each other sometimes. What do we believe? We're scared to approach each other, to understand each other. But the Quran, the book of the Allah Almighty, calls us to understand each other. Let's put it on the side for a second. Let me introduce myself. I want to just start with a little story. My name is Julie, and I was born in Romania. I from Romania to Canada. From Canada came to the UAE. And come to that, praise to God. I'm here in the UAE. I was born in a Christian family. Christian parents, Christian grandparents. Um, went to school. I learned about Christianity, the Bible, it's a mandatory course in Romania, actually, that we had to take. And we learned. And I went to Christian high school for some time. I graduated from there. Just to cut it short, basically, I became Muslim at the age of 21, not too long ago. Yeah, not too short, short of time ago. And I work as a teacher, an English teacher. And I have a double major in biology and psychology and neuroscience and a bachelor's in education. And from the lab, I'm now studying a bachelor's in Islamic studies. So this is just a brief introduction about myself. And what I'm talking about tonight, brothers and sisters, actually, education, the holiday that's fast approaching right now, as you all know, one of our Christian friends, our Christian neighbors, which is Christmas. And it's a holiday for them, and a celebration that revolves around two important figures in the history of mankind, actually. Not just for Muslims, not just for Christians. Everyone is touched by Mary and Jesus. And as we say in Islam, Mary and Isa, There seems to be a disconnect between the two sides and understanding each other, what we believe in each other. So tonight, inshallah, we're trying to reach your hearts, to tell you what we believe, to give you something to think about. But we're not here to argue with anyone, of course. But we're here to understand each other. The discussion is good, so the debate is good, as long as it's not respectful. So I will give you some points and I want you to think about it. I want you to think, don't just 
believe it. I want you to think about it. Then we go and do some more research. Maybe, inshallah, I hope, I will work with God, that this will give you interest, stimulate your interest in people who are talking about the Quran and read it yourself. I will speak about this topic, but I will not necessarily tell you all the verses. But I want you, brothers and sisters, you respect the guests, to go and pick up a copy of the Quran and read these verses. Look through it and see what they say for yourself. Because me telling you and you reading it is totally different. Okay? Right. So, this so called holiday season stuff. And again, I want to start first by apologizing. I hope I will not insult or anger anyone or hurt anyone. It's not my intention. But in a time of intellectual debate and discussion, we should be able to at least to receive some kind of information. Whether it's constructive criticism or not, take it in, analyze it, and that's it. What else can we do? Can we force it upon No. It's not teaching, it's not talking There's no compulsion in faith. We can force it upon You do what you want with it, once we tell you. But please give me your, heart, your eyes, your hearts, and your ears tonight. First, I want to ask you. The audience. For, are there any non Muslims in the audience? If you are, please raise your hand. Any non Muslims in the audience? Okay. Who can tell me? Where does Christmas come from? What does it mean? What does Christmas mean? Anyone? Yes, my brother. It's the pagan festival celebrating the return of the sun in the southernmost part. How do you know that? The brother is saying it's a, it's a festival of the Romans, it's to be a festival of the Romans, celebrates the rebirth of the God of the Sun. Okay? And it's a, the winter solstice and, and so on. So how do you know that? Books. Is that information widely available? If you Google, for example, yeah, everyone knows Shane's Google. <laughs> Let's say. Google Scholar. You can think of a Google Scholar, right? Isn't it? So it's actually Google. But if you Google origins of Christmas. Now I'm not saying again, oh yeah, please take it with a grain of salt. I'm not saying Jubil saying, I'm not saying Omar saying, I'm not saying Major saying like Google. Check type in and see non-Muslims, historians, scholars, see where does Christmas come from? Where does it come from? It's not a Christian thing. It's not a Muslim thing, that's for sure. So where does it come from? Someone invented it. Someone made it. Someone adopted it. Actually, when the Roman Empire was converting into Christianity, some people found it hard to leave some of their cultural things, some of their things that they were used to. So they said, how about we incorporate, make it easy, make a smooth transition. So they did. Just to put things at ease, please do a small research and check it out. But my question to you goes now. We look today at many of these holidays that are supposedly religious holidays. And we want to ask ourselves the question as to why? Why? Why don't they become religious? Why don't we allow them to be religious? And what does it the information that surrounds these festivities. If this is not correct, how about what surrounds what is the purpose for these festivities? What is the purpose for Christmas? Who can tell me? Sisters, someone. What is the purpose of Christmas? Celebrating. Celebrating? The birth of Jesus. The birth of Jesus. Okay? Now, before we get into this, I really want to give you a small insight. And it was a friend of mine who became Muslim. And his mom said, no. Islam is 
is nice. I like this snow. But it's there's all the but. It's like, you know, this snow is nice. But you know, it's it's a religion for heroes. It's an era religion. So the brother of Allah, Allah gave him a pig line and says, the mom. What do you mean by air by religion? Does he know that Middle Easter? Like Middle East? So the brother says to his mom, nice to him, he says, but mom, aren't you a Christian? Says, of course I'm a Christian. Wasn't Jesus from the Middle East? Isn't that Middle Eastern? <laughs> so the mom's like, I mean, this is an issue, it's actually a psychological issue. We filtrate the information that we want to take in, and we actually paint it in different colors. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? It's why like, well, Jesus, Isa, has been jaywalked. Because his name is not Jesus anyway. You know, because he's not, I don't think he's from from Nevada, from somewhere like that, from USA, or from Canada. He was from Palestine, and that was today Palestine. He came here in the Middle East, and in the Hebrew, in the Israel, and in Arabic, which is a sister language of Hebrew. You know, it's funny, when people say the Arabs are like, you know, anti-Semites or something like that, I tell them, Arabs are Semites. Arabs? Arabic and Hebrew are so correlated. Why? Abraham had two sons, right? Isaac and Ishmael. These are two two sons. They're brothers. They're brothers. We don't have any problem. They're brothers. You need to understand that. They're two brothers. The two languages, the two lines. These are, these are two sister languages. So Jesus was Yeshua and was Asa. But not Jesus. And Jesus, I'm going to use Jesus for just for the purpose of the talk, was not Jesus superstar, for example, as Americans right now have a certain show up, right? Does anyone know? Have you ever heard of Jesus Superstar? It's a movie. Of course, it's not when we see this, we feel shy actually. Because we love Prophet of Jesus so much. I feel a bit shy that people who create affiliation and will actually go to this extent. Jesus has become commercialized, you see it in cartoons and movies and different things. So, but who was Jesus? Who was Asa? This is the real question we want to ask today. Who was Mary? Who were they really? And we want to give you what Islam teaches us, who these two great people were. So please bear with this one. Now, Jesus is said to be born when? December 25th. But, see, I had an issue with this since I was young. And later on researching and finding out that it doesn't fit. Because in the Gospels, it's described when he was born, the shepherds were out with the sheep gazing. But if it would be December 25th in the winter, the shepherds would not be out. Because in Palestine, it's cold in December. So you see, this is not his real birth. So again, I want to ask you, do you raise it? Why? Why did they come back? What else is not correct? Again, I'm not making any accusations. I'm asking you, please. You research. So let's start with Jesus and Mary. Who were they from an Islamic perspective? Let's start with Mary. Who was Mary? Maria. Mary was from the house of the Lord. A righteous man, a righteous 